going forward. So once again, welcome everybody to the members live stream for the month of November. I'm excited to be here. Uh, I was so excited about this live stream that I was actually kind of tempted to start it early because I just felt like I had this this energy just like ready to go. So um, I'm bringing it today as I, I think I usually do. I think I usually bring it. And I hope that you all are ready. And by ready, what I really just mean is uh, being present and centered and grounded and open-minded and open-hearted. That's what I mean by being ready because... Uh, when I was scheduling this live stream, I knew it was time to do the live stream because it's kind of a, a routine in the monthly schedule. And I knew that I had a lot to share uh, because like so much has been going on. Uh, but I, for the life of me, I could not think of a title for this live stream. It was like, what? how do I summarize what's going to come through? And then I realized that's when I realized that it wasn't really going to come from me. Uh, this live stream is not a product of my neocortex, meaning it's not something that, you know, I'm premeditating and, and delivering like a presentation. That's not what this one is. Uh, most of them are not like that. Uh, usually I have kind of a general subject matter and then we just go from there. Uh, but this one in particular is going to be very much uh, a channeling, if you will, meaning uh, this is going to be like a direct broadcast uh, from a dimensionally greater uh, source of information. So uh, just be open-minded, open-hearted. And as always, the disclaimer is, uh, if something resonates, take it, use it to upgrade your life, count it as wealth. And if it doesn't resonate, discard it. No need to judge it. Just eh, that's not for me. That is for me. That's not for me. Right. So it's like the, that's the standard way that we approach everything. Uh, so not really having a title, uh, I came up with the plan. And the reason I call it the plan is because I feel like more than ever before, and I'm speaking you know, locally at this point, locally, meaning my, my, in, my identity in the here and now. I feel like I have an understanding about what this life is all about uh, that has surpassed maybe states that I've been in, in the past, more comprehensive, more aligned, more centered, more grounded, more focused, and also more coherent. And uh, I feel like I have an understanding of like what the plan is. And that's something that uh, has been building over time. It's been a big part of my journey. And I feel like part of my purpose and mission is to illuminate that plan in a broad sense because it is an individualized thing. And yet we're all here as individual pieces and parts, sparks of, of, the, of the one divine. We're all here doing something similar and our paths look a little bit different and we're all climbing the same mountain in a manner of speaking. And we're all at a little bit different places on the path. Um, you know, you, you can't stand literally where I'm standing because I take up the space where I'm standing, right? But we, we can be like clustered together or we can be spread out on this path of this, you know, imaginary mountain that we're all climbing, the hiking trail. Uh, and, you know, there's a lot of people, a lot of different different paths, but it's all this one thing that we're doing with all this one objective, this one mission in an esoteric, etheric, general, divine sense. And, you know, Neville being my, my primary mentor in all things, uh, metaphysical and spiritual, this is exactly what he was here to explore and explain and illuminate in his life's work. And I see all of us as being beneficiaries of all of the work that all of the mystics who came before us did, and beneficiaries for sure, but also continuers of the work. We're here to expand the work. We're here to bring it into the liquid modernity of the age. We're living. Let's just let's take a second here to, to appreciate what a beautiful, incredibly unique time to be alive. That's true in every moment, but there is something very uniquely true about what a time it is to be alive right now. There's something happening. There is a movement of energy moving across this planet right now that is happening in a way unlike it's ever happened before, certainly not any time recently. We are, meaning within the last 300,000 years, we are very much at an incredibly unique moment on the path 
of humanity. And again, to use that term, the liquid modernity of the age, we are really living in a liquid modernity. And what I mean by that is it's pulsing, it's fluid-like, it's alive. The, the, the energy of consciousness, the energy of this planet, the energy of our hopes, our dreams, our passions, our emotions, our, uh, our shadow, our light, everything is thriving and pulsing and alive, this liquid modernity of the age. And we are bringing through these technologies that are connecting us in really just incredible ways, incredible, profound ways. And these technologies are helping us see all of ourselves. So if humanity is at a certain level of perception, one being, right, the crystal Buddha, as Neville talks about it, the crystal Buddha that's formed in this beautiful, coherent being and then shatters into an infinite, infinite shards. It's not infinite, it's numbered, but still a whole bunch of shards of these little crystals and become all of these individual pieces and parts to have all of these experiences in rebuilding that one. That's the, that's, that's what's happening on a grand scale and what's happening on a little bit more micro scale to that macro story is right now in human civilization, we're learning to see more of those little pieces and parts than we've ever seen before. And our technology is helping us do that. Our technology is helping us see our light and our technology is helping us see our darkness. And we as mystics, because if you're on this live stream with, with me, without a doubt, you would consider yourself a mystic, meaning that you're uh, walking this path according to the traditions of those who walked it before us. If you're a mystic living in this age, part of your job, part of our job, part of my job, collectively, our job is to learn to embody these truths in a way that allow us to anchor the frequency and vibration of empowerment on planet earth to help the collective, to help civilization, to help all of us in this liquid modernity of the age process, evolve, grow through this adolescence that is happening on planet earth. You've probably heard me talk about this before, and in case you haven't, humanity is very much growing from childhood to maturity. And this age that we're in right now is one of adolescence. And hopefully that makes sense to you because when you look out at the world, when I look out at the world, I see a lot of people both individuals and collective groups of people uh, behaving in ways that I behaved when I was an adolescent. That rebellion, the overwhelming passions of emotion, uh, the um, you know hormonal urges, the uh, kind of not really understanding how everything fits together, but just knowing ah, I feel stuff. That's what's happening in a broad sense in macro human civilization right now. We are processing through an adolescence and parents, I'm not a parent yet, but I can speak from parents that I know who have been raising adolescents, uh, people in my family in particular, brothers and sisters have children raising them through adolescence. It's like, you think you know who your child is and then like, these hormones kick in and they start to mature and they have to start to carve their own way. Okay. So let's piece this together. Okay. So for a very long time on planet earth, humans had parents. Okay. So the parents were the centralized systems of governance and control. They were the church in the broad sense, or, you know, really any organized religion in the broad sense. They were uh, governments. They were, uh, you know, the patriarchy. They were, uh, you know, org organized um, movements and elements of control. And some of them, you know, were a little bit on the lighter side and some of them a little bit on the darker side in terms of how they went about exercising that control. But the bottom line is they were parental structures of control and they were necessary. Why? Because children need boundaries. 
right? So a very wise person said once, you know, a, a child doesn't push against the fence to try to get out. A child pushes against the fence to get reassurance that the fence will hold them in, right? So it's like they need that security and safety of the fence. They're not trying to get over the fence. They're trying to make sure that the fence is actually secure. And that's why children press against boundaries. Well, humans have been very much children for a long time, a couple thousand years, depending on which time frame, which scale of time you look at, potentially a long time. And now we're at this point where we're coming into adolescence. And what are you seeing? You're seeing teenager-like behavior across the planet right now. We're pushing against, with rebellion, we're pushing against the parental centralized authorities, parental centralized systems of control. And what is going to happen? Well, any teenager who has the opportunity to express in a healthy way adolescence has to carve their own path. Okay, so what you what you see when a child goes through adolescence and they start to develop maturity, they start to rebel against that formalized system of control over them, the parentals, and really any structure of authority. The kind of you know uh, Neville talks about it. It was like the kids get all riled up, and then the teenagers they want to go out and burn everything down. Okay, and it's like I think in the Battle of Armageddon lecture he was talking about that. That's a very teenager thing to do. It's like we got to like find our own ways to be ourselves and to express what we came here to express. And that's very normal, natural, and healthy. And that's what's happening on the planet right now. And so if you're looking at that and you're judging it, that's not helpful. It's not helpful to look at rebellious teenagerhood and judge it like, oh, they shouldn't be doing that. Or why is this happening? Or I just wish that there would be peace on earth and goodwill towards men. Like if you're like, why can't we just be that way? Okay. So like that would stunt the growth of humanity. Let's just be, let's just call it what it is. That would stunt the adolescence. Okay. Which means that we wouldn't have children growing up through adolescence to become competent adults who are mature, who know how to relate with each other, who know how to build things, who know how to commit to things, who know how to act and live with integrity. Okay. So really that's the goal of humanity. We're growing into this place where we as a diverse multitude of people across civilization, all of these individual pieces and parts and cultures and, and countries and, and lands and eras and, and ways of thinking and being and looking at the world, all of us. Because if you take a look, this theme is running rampant in every corner of the planet right now. There's not a country that is unaffected by this theme of adolescent energy. It has seized everything and we're growing through it. And the whole purpose of this is to give humanity the chance to become an adult in that way, to become mature in that way. And this is the plan for humanity. Now, in my studies recently, both internally and externally, meaning reviewing external sources of information which inspire contemplation on the inside so that I can download directly because that's a big part of, of you know becoming a mature adult. Uh, when you're a, an adolescent or a child, you accept everything that is told to you from the outside. If you're going to become a, a mature and competent adult, you must learn to draw from your own inner wisdom. And that's exactly the process that I've been going through. So it's like, yes, I'm inspired by what Neville and other mystics and other teachers say. And, and I do welcome that. I'm, uh, per, uh, perennial student. I will always be a student in some way, but those sources of information are partly on the outside and ever increasingly from my own inner connection. So what I do now is I allow external sources to inspire my own discovery. And then I go within and I contemplate and I develop my understanding further. Okay. So going into contemplation on the inside and like really piecing together everything that I'm learning, both just comprehensively internally and from external sources. Uh, what I've come to understand, and I'm I'm going to do my best to try to summarize this for you. And I hope uh, that, I mean, this is probably the sort of thing that I could talk about for like weeks. Like this could be like a course that I could talk about for weeks and maybe I'll be inspired to put together something like that. Uh, maybe that's what this next leg of the mentorship is about. We'll see. But uh, I just want to like try to give you a couple of aha moments uh, in your own, you know, to inspire your own contemplation after this. So you can take what I say to you into the silence and 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 allow it to, 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 to 
nourish that part of you that knows this already so that you can really connect to that inner source of wisdom. Okay. Here's basically the, the plan. Okay. So in the most recent episode of the mentorship, I introduced an energy activation meditation. This energy activation meditation is not mine in the sense of ownership. It draws on an eclectic group of sources, internal and external, once again, and traditions and metaphysical, ethereal, esoteric archetypes. And it uses these tools to activate and begin to grow, to initiate, activate, and begin to grow a multi-dimensional sensory organ of perception. Say that again. This energetic activation meditation is designed with intention to activate, initiate, and begin to grow your, our, multidimensional sensory organs of perception. Okay? Let's unpa- unpack that a little bit. Okay? So I have sensory or- organs of perception that enable me to interact with you just as I am right now. Okay? So that's the obvious ones, the five obvious ones. There are additional sensory organs of perception that you can't see with your physical eyes. And that's why in our physical sense dominated reality that most people pay most most of their attention to what they can measure with their five normal senses. Most people don't know that these additional multidimensional sensory organs of perception exist, and yet they do. And every single one of us have them but you could, in a manner of speaking, call them atrophied. Okay. So you don't use it, you lose it. Okay. So because we are not humans, we are souls animating temporarily the costume of the human physical body. We have sensory organs of perception associated with the dimensions that our souls exist on. And those sensory organs of perception are temporarily forgotten while we get used to wearing this very dense physical garment of human flesh. There's a little bit of a period of time of acclimating to being in a physical human body. Okay. So this is, you know, childhood, like, like, wow, I have hands. Oh, look at my feet. Oh, I can kick. Oh, look, I can crawl. Oh, look, I can walk. But whoa, it's like, got to find my balance. Right. So it's like, You got to go through this whole thing. So in order to prioritize getting used to being in the physical human body, we temporarily shut off those additional things. Otherwise, it would be sensory overload. It'd be way too much, potentially, okay? At least it would have been for me growing up. I I was too busy trying to figure out how to be a human. I didn't really have space at the time to also be a uh, multidimensional being wearing, you know, even though that's what my true identity was, I wasn't ready to be aware of that in the... Uh, full and present embodied sense because that's kind of focused just on on being a human. It's like the first time that you start to drive, if you, if you ever drive a car, when, you first, when I first got behind the wheel of a car, I didn't have friends in the car. I didn't try to listen to music. I certainly wasn't texting. I was focused on like all of the sensory or, 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 or phys- the physicality of driving, like the wheel and the pedals and like paying attention to what's going on around me, right? I had to like get that down first before I could even listen to music or before I could have friends in the car or carry on a conversation or like, you know, of course I still don't text and drive, but bottom line being like, I wasn't doing anything extra. I was just focused on the task at hand. And that's what the first, for most of us, at least 33 years of our life is focused on. Just getting used to being a human in a physical body, okay? And then we get to this point where we're kind of used to being a human and we've processed a lot of the trauma from being human because let's let's face it, being human is equipped to trauma. Like even the fact of becoming a human is traumatic because we go from what we were, what we are, 
<laughs> what we are in the fullest sense. And we like shrink down and try to fit into this tiny little, you know, sleeve of the physical human body. And like, even that is a, is a, you could call that a traumatic experience. Okay. So we go, go through this and we start to process some of the trauma. We're like kind of comfortable being human. We can walk, we can talk, we can relate with people. We're starting to like, you know, really get comfortable in our own skin. And usually that doesn't happen before age 33 anyways. And kind of get to this point where all right, I'm feeling pretty, feeling pretty good about being human processed, integrated some of the trauma of like this whole experience. And then you get to the point where you can start to hear things like what I'm telling you now, like, Hey, remember you're not actually a human. You're a multidimensional being. You're a traveler. And you've had many incarnations in many different places in this massive universe that we share. And you're bringing a lot of that with you, but you weren't ready to hear it before right now. So right now, let's start to talk about who you actually are beyond the bounds of your physical human body. Okay. So now you're like, all right, cool. Yeah. Let's have that conversation because I feel good enough being here that I'm ready to hear that. Okay. So let's talk about the people that aren't ready to hear this. Okay. So you're not ready to hear this. If your cup isn't full, if you're still trying to figure out how to meet your basic human needs, you're not ready to hear about your multidimensional superpowers. Okay. If you're still like stuck in judgment and angst and anger, and by the way, I'm not judging any of you that may feel this way because there's parts of me that still deal with this on a regular basis too. Okay. So it's like, I'm not, I'm not like projecting any type of judgment on anything. I'm just saying, if you're in a place where you're still focused on the horrors of the world and judging them, you're not ready to hear about your multidimensional superpowers. Okay. I just, that's just real talk. Okay. It's like you, you got to have a cup full. You got to have some semblance of acceptance of what this world is and who you are in it. And then we can talk about your multidimensional superpowers. Okay. So what are your multidimensional superpowers? Well, it starts by activating your multidimensional sensory organs of perception. Okay. So just like I have my sensory organs here on a higher level, my soul has organs of perception. They've been there the whole time, but we have the opportunity to choose to activate them. And none of us will choose before it's time to do so because we're not ready to hear it. Okay. I heard things like this 15 years ago. I actually remember a spiritual teacher that I, through the law of attraction, found and brought into my life and started learning from him, talking about stuff like this. And guess what? Right over my head. Why? I wasn't ready to hear it. It's like it went in and I was like, oh, that's cool. And then out just as quickly. Why? Because I simply wasn't ready. I wasn't an energetic vibrational match to that part of his teaching. Okay. So it just went right out. So I can confidently share this with each of you now, knowing that if you're ready, this is going to light you up like a Christmas tree. And if you're not ready, you're going to say, wow, that's kind of cool what Josiah was saying today. And then you're going to forget about it. And you're going to move on. And you know, that's cool because this is going to happen at the right time for you. But the right time for me to share this is now. And that's why we're talking about it now. And if you've been going through my mentorship, I have been setting this up for a while, helping you. I mean, th there's a lot of layers to what we've been doing and maybe you can see some of them, but I've been helping you get your energetic configuration ready to have this conversation. Okay. Let's talk about it. Multidimensional sensory organs of perception. Okay. So these are the parts of you that can perceive things that are beyond the realm of the electromagnetic frequencies perceived by your eyes, ears, skin, you know, the, the taste, smell, all the, all the typical physical senses. Okay. So it's like, if we can perceive beyond that, that's these other sensory organs of perception. These are the ones that scientists don't know that they exist because scientists are so focused on exploring the part of the electromagnetic spectrum we can measure with our very young very immature devices. Okay. Now there's coming an age of humanity and it might be three to five to 700 years off. I don't know. I don't know. But there is a time coming when humanity will be able to measure multidimensional things using devices. Okay. But we're not there yet. So our scientists don't know about this. So if you start talking about things like this, a lot of people will be like, well, scientists can't see that. So it's not real. Okay. But you know better because you know that what you can see in your imagination is real. And if you focus on it, it will become fact. So let's all just focus on getting, you know, eventually when the time is right to the point where we can measure these things. But in the meantime, let's not get hung up on measuring it. Let's focus on experiencing it. Okay. So the energy activation meditation, what is that doing? The energy activation meditation is designed to help you activate 
these multidimensional sensory organs of perception. And what it's all about is helping you begin to tune the antennas that you can't see with your physical eyes. Now, this particular meditation, it's a lot of talking. It's not really, I mean, people use the word meditation kind of um, generically. And I suppose that in a generic sense, it's a meditation because you're like focused on something. So like if we define meditation as focusing on something, it is a meditation. But there's also an element of meditation that's like just sitting in the silence and like just being in a silent mind, which of course no one's mind is truly silent. So it's a choice to choose the silence over the thoughts that flutter across your awareness. That in one sense is true meditation. So this meditation track is more of a focus track on let's go in to the silence and focus on activating these multidimensional sensory organs of perception. So that's exactly what this is doing. And it's not that they're not already there. They've been there the whole time, but through your focus on them. So what you focus on grows, right? So what you place your attention on, attention is the currency of the universe. So you're like investing in it. You bring your, and this is why I told you to do it multiple days in a row, because you're making an investment of energetic currency, your attention into it, and you're beginning to develop and grow it. Okay. So you take this, this energy of attention and you flow it into, in this case, I'm, I'm guiding you through a process and there's a million ways to do this, but this particular process, again, eclectically designed, drawing on traditions from a bunch of different places to help you begin to focus on activating these things and in a grounded and responsible way. There was an era of my uh, early spiritual growth where I was, in a manner of speaking, I lusted after results. Lusted after results. What do, what do I mean by that? What do I mean by that is I was like, ooh, I have a third eye. How cool would it be to like be able to see like spiritual perception and like perceive things on like another level? And it felt like a superpower. And so I got excited and passionate about it. I was like, oh, I'm going to activate my third eye. And of course, if you go on YouTube and like type that in, there's a billion videos out there that's like, listen to this frequency, activate your third eye. So this is all like that instant you know, fast food type mentality, fast, fast spiritual food type mentality of like, oh, what well, you've got this. So why not activate it? Okay. So not to, not, not judging that, just saying that's the contrast. Okay. By contrast, that's another way to do it. The way that we're choosing to do it is with an eye and intention on responsibility. So by responsible, what I mean by that is you're taking the time to really become centered and focused. You are grounding yourself and you're using imaginal pictures to do so. Ground yourself from the bottom, you ground yourself from the top. Okay. And if you've done this meditation, you know what I'm talking about. And then you're taking the time to actively align your frequency with the earth and with the cosmos, you know, standing in between and there's an element of structure and order to this meditation, meaning that it it step by step by step. We're not rushing anything. There's no place to be. You got don't got to get anywhere. Uh, we're not we're not like. And then while we're going through this process, we're also activating a specific state. Okay, so it's like let go of impatience let go of time. There is no time. Not now, not where we're going. Like There is no time. Just be here now. Be supremely centered. So we do that. And then we begin to activate these energy centers, which each have a role, a purpose, and a utility in the fullness of the being that we are. Now, this energy activation meditation that I'm speaking of now, it really is a level one. And I think I even labeled the, the track that a level one, because we can go so much further. We, you know, you got to start at the beginning. And it's, so it's a good like introductory. And I know that a lot of you, I imagine anyways, that a lot of you 
I've explored things like this in the past. Like, I don't think that I'm surprising anybody with this subject matter. The reason why I'm I'm bringing it forth is because I I like I I feel that it's supremely valuable, and I feel like there's a wise progression that it can be experienced in, and so I'm doing my best to lead you through that wise progression to orchestrate it in 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 syncopated i guess in in a um hopefully in a beautiful and conscientious wise and responsible way so that that's really like the mission statement for beginning to explore like this whole house of multidimensional perception okay so why do we do this why do we do this okay so let me give you a couple examples so as i've been going through this process of activating my multidimensional sensory organs of perception. And like I said, there's multiple levels to this. Uh, the meditation I shared with you all is level one. I'm working on level two right now uh, to develop it in a way where I can bring it to you all in a track. So where I am with my exploration of this, and this is part of the sharing I wanted to do in this live stream is kind of share like the ways in which this exploration is adding value to my life. Where I am with this is I'm starting to realize that uh, everything that is beyond our physical human incarnation, so kind of kind of doing a little callback to what I was just saying a few minutes ago about, you know, when you first get to Earth and you like plug into a physical human body, your first 33 years are spent, invested, really getting used to the idea of having a physical vessel and like learning how to operate it and do things and build skills and, and you know relate with other people and then also processing the trauma of being human. And then you get to the point where you're ready to to explore more, right? So everything that is beyond that physical that physicality is stored in dimensions that are beyond 3D, okay? So it's like if if I consider my body 3D and it's not, it's more than that, but like on the crust of it, it's 3D, okay? So everything that's like beyond that is in non, we'll say it this way, it's in non-physical dimensions, okay? So to perceive those things, I have to develop my ability to perceive non-physical dimensions. Oh, that feels so much better to say it that way. Okay. I have to develop my ability to perceive non-physical dimensions to deal with non-physical dimensional things. Okay. So as one example, I'm sure you all uh, have heard about these people. A lot of them are very vocal who remember all of their past lives, or at least a lot of their past lives. Like they're very integrated, all of that additional information in their present human physicality. Okay. That information is not stored in a manner of speaking in their physical human body. Okay. That's, that's non-physical information that they're connected to. And the way that they perceive that information is through their multidimensional sensory organs of perception that are tuned into the non-physical. Okay. So I say all that to say that as I've done these energetic practices and begun to develop my non-physical sensory organs of perception, I have begun to remember things like previous incarnations, things like what I was doing immediately before I became a human being on planet earth in this time and space. I, I'm starting to get memories of those things. And the reason is they've been there the whole time. It's not like they're new. The reason I'm starting to be able to perceive them is because I'm starting to develop my multidimensional sensory organs of perception. And I'm doing it intentionally, responsibly, at least that's my intention, is responsibly as, as I am guided in wisdom to do, and with focus. So I'm starting to remember things like, I'll give you an example. So um, I have this memory of uh, being shown in dreamlike imagery from the top down, almost like looking at a map, uh, like a map of my of my life path, like this this current arc that I'm living right now. Like I was shown before, like before 
it's so weird using dimensional language. Before I became this, I was shown like this potential arc of the life of being this character named Josiah on planet Earth at this time. And I was shown what the major themes of the civilization to be incarnating into would be. And I was shown uh, some of the key things like, all right, you're going to incarnate here. And, uh, you know, technology is really going to be born basically with you. And as you become an adolescent and start to grow into maturity, technology will just be starting to like really spread across, you know, the world. Like for, for example, I was, you know, I was coming of age. I was like a teenager when the internet became meaningfully the internet for everyone. Like I was an early adopter of the internet in that, in that case, like before, you know, there was a, a Google, you know, I, I was like a teenager and, you know, uh, cell phones weren't a thing until I was in high school. Right. So it's like, I, I was shown a lot of these little details, like there's going to be this technological movement that's going to really start to advance this society, this civilization very, very quickly. And you're going to be coming up in unison with this. And the reason why you're incarnating here, because like, think about it. Neville didn't have any of this stuff. Neville, I mean, they had radio and they had a little bit of TV. Neville actually had a TV show. Uh, it's kind of a, a lesser known fact. He had a TV show in, in Los Angeles for a couple of years. But it was all broadcast. And as far as we know, there's no recordings. Like it's like the way it, their technology was so limited back then. Okay. So it's like I'm incarnating and I'm coming up with technology that's going to connect all people in my lifetime. All 8 billion of us have the opportunity to talk to each other. And we're not quite there yet, but in my lifetime, we will. So it's like the whole planet starting to get connected to each other and all of the chaos that ensues from that and also all of the beauty that ensues from that. And I was shown all of this and that's what made me say, yeah, I want to be that guy. I want to take a crack at being human and incarnate and this is totally up my alley. I want to play that character in this grand theater that is planet Earth in the early second millennium. I didn't remember that I'd been shown all that until I really started to clue in and, and tune in to my antenna that are non-physical because all that information is stored actually in my bio field because my soul, part of my soul that's incarnate here is here. Okay. So all that information is here. All the things that I've done before, it's all here. But in order to make those little connections to that, you know, the multidimensional internet of me to download from that source of information, I have to develop my network connection. And that's what this, I'm using metaphors now, but that's what this is all about. I lost my focus here. Hello? There we go. That's what this is all about. This is all about developing those multidimensional sensory organs of perception to be able to clue into other things. So Again, setting the tone for this in the mentorship, it's like, you have a purpose. You have a mission. There's a reason why you're here being who you are, doing what you're doing. It doesn't have to be something that you'll be recognized. Like, you don't, we won't, don't necessarily be a household name, okay? It doesn't have to be something super dramatic or like crazy in any way, okay? It, like, literally, there is no... expectation about what that mission is. Only you will know for you. Your soul knows why you are here. And I've also started to become aware through my multidimensional sensor organs of perception. I've been told this by other people before, but I didn't know that. It's not that I didn't know. I didn't perceive it for myself. There you go. I didn't perceive it for myself that there are, I'm, I'm not the only incarnation of me right now, of the soul that I am. I'm not the only incarnation of me. And I didn't perceive that until I began to develop these non-physical sensory organs of perception, okay? So again, this whole world of information that I can tune into, and this is also when I started to make the switch from mostly taking in outside information to reducing the outside information coming in and focusing on the contemplation on the inside. Why? Because now I have my own internet connection to my own multidimensional internet of soul. And I have that now. And so now I'm able to download from there and be educated in a local sense on that now. So again, this is not for you 
if your cup isn't full because it's almost like escapism to try to like go out into the ethereal, go out into the, you know, multidimensional universe when like there's very real tangible physical things going on that you need to face here and now. Okay. So it's like, what I've started to realize is that for people who try to escape by doing that, there are systems of governance in place that will keep them focused on the 3D. So it's like, there's a little bit of a, not a little bit, there's a whole lot, uh, an incredible amount of intelligence. I mean, it's infinite intelligence that that manages this whole experience that we're having. And when you are not ready for that, you won't experience it. But when you are ready for it, it's available to you. Okay. So it's like, you're, you're literally designing and refining your energetic systems. And then when the time comes, when you're ready to have these other experiences, you will begin to have them. And Neville talked about this, even in his lectures. And a lot of people weren't ready to hear it as is evidenced by the experience that he had in like the fifties and sixties of people like just stop coming to his lectures because he was like way too advanced for what they're ready to hear. And he didn't care. He's like, it's more important that I get this out. Why? Well, now I understand he wasn't talking to the people in the room. He was, but he was talking to more than just the people in the room. He was talking to the millions of people who have now heard him through channels like mine, through channels like everybody else who helps make sure that Neville's words get out there. He was talking to way more than just a couple of people who, you know, were blowing back and forth with the tides and affairs of men. And like, you know, he was hot one minute and cold the next, like, uh, you know, mad mystic of Manhattan. Right. So it's like, oh, he's like an entertainment value. Go see this guy. He talks crazy, you know? And then they're like, oh, that's too crazy for me. Let's leave. He didn't care. He was like, no, I'm actually, yes, I'm here for you, but I'm not just here for you. I'm here for so much more than you. I'm here to talk about these things because I know that future generations of humanity need to hear them. And I'm in the place where I can give in that way. Okay. Well, we are part of those future generations and we've taken what we've been taught from him. We've begun to incorporate it. And now we're beginning to expand upon it because there's things that he talked about that he didn't really go further in that we have the opportunity to take that and go further in them through our own inner education, through our own multidimensional internet connection. We can be to develop these ideas and then share them with others for the same intention of inspiring that growth and development within them. And that my friends, is exactly how we help in our own beautiful way human civilization process through this transient adolescence into full, mature, embodied, beautiful adulthood. That's exactly what I signed up to do. And you're here with me. You signed up to do it too in your own beautiful way. You saw, oh, I get to go to this distant little birthing house of a humanoid species known as earth humans. And I get to help them through their technological revolution in adolescence to graduate into a beautiful, embodied, human, multidimensional, multiplanetary galactic species. Heck yeah. I am so down to do that. I'm so down. You said that. I said that before we incarnated. And if we've forgotten, it's only again, because we're focused on being human for the first little while. Now we're ready to remember that. And guess what? With that remembering comes this intense feeling of existential joy. Because I don't know about you. If being on earth is just doing earth things, getting up, showering, brushing my hair, getting something to eat, doing my work, hanging out with my partner. I know that's all pretty great, right? But like, still, if that's all there is, well, okay. But also I know who I am. I know what I'm capable of on a soul sense. So why would I choose to limit myself to only doing that? The truth is I didn't. It's just that I had to focus on that for a while. I had to focus on you know, driving before I could turn on the music and talk to friends and have a good time, right? I had to focus just on getting that skill set going. And now we've got it. And now it's time for the existential joy. Now it's time to do what you came here to do. And the earth has never been more ready because with destruction creates space for creation. 
there's a lot of destruction going on right now. And guess what? It's about to reach a fever pitch because the volume is going up. It's not coming down. The volume is going up. And the next three years, the next three years, you are going to see things that you didn't imagine seeing. Okay. Why? Because you're beautiful beings and you didn't come here to imagine evil and ill, but we're in that world where all things exist. Okay. So things are going to happen. We're going to see the full spectrum of polarity. It's all going to be on display. And if you are in a place where your cup isn't full and you're in judgment, it is going to rock you. It is going to rock you to your core. If you're ungrounded, if you're judgmental, if you haven't faced and processed your own shadow and trauma, if your cup isn't full and you haven't figured out how to be comfortable in your own skin, you are going to get rocked. You're going to get rocked. And so many people are going to be rocked. It is going to be a difficult, troubling adolescent adolescent period for a lot of people. Okay? But you don't have to experience it that way. And that's exactly why we're having this conversation right now. Because you have choice. You actually have choice about where you're going to invest your time. And if you choose to invest your time in developing yourself, developing your connection to source, activating your multidimensional sensor organs of perception, you're going to develop this resilience and this existential joy that cannot be snuffed out by anything that happens in the world and affairs of men. You'll be untouchable, unflappable, undefeated, a champion. What makes a champion? Champion is not the person that never faces adversity. Champion is the one who faces adversity and rises through it and comes out victorious. That's you. That's you, my friend. You are a champion and you have the opportunity to rise through all of these fires of affliction victorious. And how do you do it? By remembering who you are. And that's not some vague platitude. You need to remember who you are. And I don't just mean the divinity in you that you're God. Yes, that's part of it. Let's get more specific. You are a multidimensional being. You are a soul. You are a source in and of yourself, which is also a mirror and a fractal of the one source that connects all things. You have lived many lives, many, many lives, and not all of them on earth. Chances are you've been on earth more than once. Sometimes it takes us more than one time around to get used to being human. Okay. But you've lived many incarnations. In fact, because all time is now, once you move above this very dense and limited time of this dimension, you are actually living all kinds of lives right now as a soul. All of that information is available to you in your own personal internet access. You have a multidimensional internet built into your own soul. It is connected, of course, through an uplink to the one multidimensional universal soul, universal source, of course. That would be People have used terms like the Akashic, right? It's like that broad library of all things that have ever existed or ever could exist. You can connect to that, but you have a local internet, uh, an intranet of your own multidimensional soul where you can access all of the other incarnations of all the other people that you've been and are being, all the other places that you've been and are being, and you have all that information available to you. And what that means is that you are equipped. There is nothing that this earthly human experience can throw at you that you're not prepared for. The only way you could feel unprepared is if you don't remember your training. Because in a manner of speaking, you have trained to be here at this time. We don't just send just anybody to a cradle of civilization to help them graduate to the next level. No, we send people who have trained for it. Your soul has trained for this. You have developed to the point where you're ready to help a planet graduate. And that's exactly what's happening now. Now, not all of the work will be done in our lifetimes, but we are at this very nascent stage. We are planting the seeds for something very beautiful because again, it's the adolescence. I know that more of my identity was formed in my adolescence. A lot of my identity was formed in my adolescence. Yeah, there's a lot of chaos and passion, whatever. Like I really started to figure out who I am in my adolescence on a fractal scale, right? So I'm a fractal of the whole, okay? So I really started to figure out who I am in my adolescence. And that planted the seeds for very beautiful adult maturity. That's exactly what's going on on planet Earth right now. We're figuring out who we are. 
And you know what? There's a lot of voices out there because all things exist. There's a lot of voices out there that's saying, no, 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 humans are anything special. Humans are, you know, just worms of the mud, as Neville would say. Humans, you know, we're we're we we think we can be good, but in the end, we're just destructive, or or we're we're a cancer upon the earth. That one makes me laugh when I hear that. It's like the last thing that we are, a cancer upon the earth. And if you believe that, gut check yourself, because that's definitely not what we are. It's a story you can tell, but it's definitely not what we are. Okay. There's all these stories being told, but the bottom line is, is there's a very beautiful narrative about exactly what human beings are. We are the sons of the most high. And we came here for a purpose. We came here because this is the most grand and vast and beautiful experience and experiment imaginable. And the future, it's not pre-written. There's infinite futures there that are pre-written, but it's not predetermined. We get to choose which future we live into. And humanity as a species in many ways, I mean, we all do it individually and in a lot of cases, you know, I, I'm going to experience the world that I've created for myself, but we're also sharing this space with all of these other sparks of the divine. One, we're sharing it. So we do have a collective experience as well as an individual experience. And that collective experience is going to be mediated by our collective sense of identity. Who is, who are we? What does it mean to be human? What is a human? What is the story we're going to tell about what a human is and what a human is capable of? And in this time of adolescence, humanity is requires that people like you and I are here telling a very beautiful story about what is possible. Story can help define identity. And that's why I'm sharing my story with you all today. I'm doing my part to kind of help start to spread these seeds in my own, my own way. And each of you is responsible to do the same. Begin to spread those seeds about a different narrative, a more beautiful narrative, a more cohesive and coherent and aligned narrative, which comes not because you just made it up. It comes because you are beautiful, cohesive, and aligned. You are in a fractal of the most beautiful whole. You have aligned yourself in that way. And a lot of that comes down to how you have centered and aligned your energy your non-physical energy, your soul. How aligned is your soul, your truth, your source with your physical human body? Because your physical human body is going to be the densest version and representation of who you are on a multidimensional sense. So make it that. Make it a representation that you're proud of. This is a representation of my soul. I'm proud of this representation of my soul. And I get to walk through my world. I don't even have to open my mouth. I will because I'm a communicator. And it's the contract that I signed when I came here. I was like, yeah, I'm going to come to earth and I'm going to do exactly what I'm doing now. And that's why you see all this passion and enthusiasm coming through me right now. This is a product of my existential joy. I agreed to open my mouth and to talk about these types of things. I don't have to. I can just walk around my world in alignment and I am a local broadcast. I'm a node for the multidimensional internet. I am a cell phone tower sending out signals. I'm a, I guess maybe a better metaphor would be a, a radio tower, like broadcasting out a, a frequency and a vibration of connectedness, of, of, of oneness, of wholeness, of alignment, of, of, of beauty, of, of value. And just by being that source, if you've done any studies on frequency and vibration at all, which I encourage you to do, you will understand that everything entrains to coherence. So you can be as dissonant as the day is long and a source of coherence comes in, dissonance will move towards coherence. That's the math of the fabric of this universe. Dissonance will always move to coherence. Chaos will always be entrained by order and to order. So when you're walking around and you're in that coherent aligned vibration, the chaos will entrain to you, not the other way around. But again, only if your cup is full, you know who you are, your multidimensional identity, you're tuned in, you're turned on, you're tapped in, and you're broadcasting the truth. You're broadcasting yourself. You're broadcasting yourself, your source. You are the broadcast. I am the show. I am the choir. I am the source. I am the alignment. I, I be that. We be that. And that's our job. Now, It'll take additional forms than that. You know, for me, it's doing exactly what I'm doing right now. For you, it'll be doing whatever the equivalent version of that is for you in your life. Okay. There will take additional forms, but you're going to begin to do as you develop these parts of yourself, you're going to start to remember. You're going to be like, whoa, 
this is so much more than kind of the flat, like, trust me, a couple of years ago, this did not seem flat at all. This whole idea of like God becoming man, the man become God, like that seemed like all of it. And in a very broad, like summarize the human experience in a sentence. Yeah, of course that is it. But it's also flat compared to when you start to unlock your multi access to your multidimensional internet and you start to download all these additional aspects of your identity. Like you're so much more than Jane Doe from Stockholm. Like you're so much more than that. Like you are, you have all of these pieces and parts and all of this, like the, the resolution, like you're not four pixels. You're 10,000 pixels, you know, you're, you're not, you know, 1080p, you're, you're 12k, right? It's like, there's so much more to you than you, than you even recognize right now. And there's so much more to me than even like in the state that I'm in right now, where I'm feeling extremely, supremely connected. There's still so much more that I'm not even able to see right now, because even I, in my state right now, I'm still young in developing these aspects of my being. And there's a reason for that too. It serves that I go step by step, because if I just like all of a sudden started levitating around planet earth, I would be, be very difficult to relate to anyone else. And a big part of my mission for this lifetime is learning to relate to others and learning to share, give the gifts that I've got. Right. So again, if I'm just like becoming invisible and by locating and like levitating around the planet, all things are of course are possible. I can do all of that. Well, I don't know how to do it yet, but I know it's possible. But if I was just doing that just right now, it'd be very hard to relate with people who are like, you know, addicted to TikTok and like trying to figure out how to have real in-person conversations with others and like struggling to find any type of mission and purpose in life and super, super depressed. Okay. That's like, a, that's a lot of people right now are in that state. And if I'm just doing like the super exalted thing, like I can't relate with any of that. Okay. So it's like, we're going to take this step by step by step, but just know that you're like, 12K, you're 24K, like whatever, 48K. You're 128K. And maybe you can see 1080p right now. You get what I'm saying? Weird technological metaphors that I'm using, but maybe you can see 1080p right now. Maybe you can see 4K right now. I don't know. But the bottom line is you're going to start to see more. And as you see it, you get to ground it in and embody it. And then this is what the work becomes. I don't even know how long we've gone here. I'm not even looking at time. I'm just letting the download come through, uh, the broadcast come through. This is what the work becomes. The work becomes getting up every single day and retuning to that alignment. The work becomes prioritizing that alignment above and beyond anything else. Prioritizing the alignment. My cup is full. I know who I am. I'm connected to my multidimensional identity. I'm processing my shadow. I'm processing my trauma. I'm facing it. I'm 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 giving words to it. I'm 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 Allowing it to process, I'm allowing it to become part of me rather than like locking it away or being ashamed of it. Like we've all experienced trauma and all that trauma has created darkness. And that darkness is a part of the light. Like it's shadow. If it were all just light, there wouldn't be anything to experience but light. We have the opportunity to really appreciate how shadow gives contrast and become whole beings, not whole meaning we have no darkness, whole meaning we've incorporated our darkness. And now there's a picture that's formed because a picture requires light and dark colors right? It's not the picture of white light is not, there's nothing to see there. Okay. So it's like, we have infinite resolution. We have infinite colors. And it's because we've incorporated all that into ourselves. We've invited the darker parts of ourselves along on the mission. Not that they take the reins or, or take the steering wheel and drive, but they're a voice that we pay attention to. And we say, yeah, okay. That's also another perspective, you know, and then we can choose how to integrate that perspective into a supreme alignment. And that's what the work is filling your own cup, getting into alignment, coming into that supreme vibration, and then following your guidance, following your enthusiasm, unlocking that existential joy, going about it step by step. And this meditation to bring it all, all together now, this meditation is just my attempt to bring you some sort of structure to help you begin to unlock all of these additional aspects some sort of like guidance and structure for it. And again, if you're ready, there's nothing else to do than to just be available for it. And if you're not ready, 
You won't feel attracted to trying the meditation. What I'm saying to you today might sound novel, but you'll quickly forget about it. And that's fine. That's fine. I'm most, I mean, everybody needs to hear this, but if you're ready for it, it'll become alive in you. And if you're not, the seeds are planted. And when the time is right, it will become alive in you. Right? And that's that's what I'm here to say. Okay, so I wanted to address a question that I got from Carmen Ray, one of the mentorship students. And she said, you know, I'm doing the meditation. I haven't noticed anything. And she specified, she's like, I'm doing it authentically. My heart's in it. And I'm still not noticing anything. And I just want to say, it's not about getting a result. It's not about really seeing something new, even though I just spent the last hour telling you about all the new things. That's not the point in a manner of speaking. This is what I want to communicate to you. So it's like, don't feel like something isn't happening because you haven't recognized the results. Okay. You said yourself, you're you're doing it authentically and your heart's in it. That's enough. And I'm not even going to tell you that you need to do it 15 more times. If you feel attracted to do it 15 more times, do it 15 more times. If you feel attracted, I mean, some, some of you will do it daily. Some of you will do it once a week. I mean, do whatever, like find the structure and rhythm that works for you. Don't, do not force this. It will not happen before it's ready. Okay. Like don't force it, like be open to it, welcome it, invite it. And if you feel not ready and you want to be ready, then invite alignment to emerge that allows you to be ready for it. I mean, you can like welcome it and like walk that path. Uh, full disclosure, if you do that, whatever, if you do what I just said, whatever's clouding, clogging, blocking, in a manner of speaking, slowing down your readiness will come to the surface to be recognized. So it's going to be a test of your resilience. And this is this is not like a, this is not something to be afraid of. Like, I, I went through many years of my life where I was afraid of difficult things coming up because I, was, I wasn't I was sure that I had the resources and the tools to handle them because my cup wasn't full, okay? Now, with my cup full, and I, I really hope you know what I mean when I say that. I'm going to trust that you do. With my cup full, I know that I have the tools to deal with anything that comes up. And so now I'm in a place where I can welcome, like, hey, whatever whatever is unacknowledged, that's one thing I love about that meditation. Like sometimes all you need to do is give it a hello. Sometimes the most profound healings come as a result of a hello, like a simple acknowledgement. Like if there's something that you're not acknowledging about yourself or about your energy, and by the way, I'm not speaking to you directly, Carmen Ray, I'm I'm speaking generally now, just to be clear. Um, If there's something that like, You're, you haven't been seeing or acknowledging, um, be, be, be open and ready to acknowledge it and know that you have the support, know that you have the tools, know that you have the resilient. I mean, you, you, you've gone through the mentorship, you, you know, the main tools that I teach, you've learned from other people, you know, their main tools, like you, you have so much available to you're safe to explore these parts of yourself. So I, what I would say, this is where I'm at now. Okay. So it's like, if it's right for you, run with it. And if not, well, just wait. And eventually, you know, when the time is right, but where I'm at right now is, is when I feel blocked or slowed down or kind of clogged up in some area of my flowing energy. Now I ask my multidimensional eyes to show me what I'm haven't seen yet so that I can acknowledge it. And if necessary, process it and integrate it, which by the way, is a gift. Like so much of our trauma or darkness or shadow, the reason that it's there is because it has a gift to give us. And if we don't process it, we won't receive the gift. So we really are set up for success. Okay. So like, and this goes for anything, like anything in your life, you're like, I'd like to be farther than where I am. And I feel like kind of stuck or bogged down or whatever. Just ask, like, show me what it is that I need to acknowledge 
to help me integrate this gift. And not because I'm lusting after the results of what happens after, not because I'm lusting after having superpowers, but because I know and value being my whole self, my light and my darkness all together in unison, coherence, and beauty. That should be the primary intention. And from that place, you can welcome this information to be revealed to you so that you can incorporate it and become a more whole and present embodiment of yourself so you can do everything else that we talked about, tapping into your existential joy, giving life, voice, and expression to who you really are. Let that settle for a second here. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take the last 10 minutes here to look at the chat and address any um, messages that I feel inspired to address. And then uh, we will wrap it up. Definitely. I see now the time. Okay. So we've, we've had a good live stream today. It's been a, a good a good deep dive. Thank you for riding this wave with me. Uh, this has been the plan. Uh, and now I will take a look at your comments and then we will wrap up. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for uh, dropping messages in the chat. I see all of your messages now. I know I didn't like formally say hi to all, all of you. Thank you so much for being here. Um, yeah, this is awesome. I, it's I love you guys. You guys are amazing. Thank you for being here. Uh, okay. Cool. All right. So uh, two questions here that I see. From Monica. Josiah. Do images come to you during your meditations or do the insights come to you randomly as a result of the consistent meditations? And do you see your visions in first person? Fantastic question. Okay. So usually insights will come to me. Uh, they will unfold over time. It's uh, usually not during the meditation. It's usually later and they come just like manifestations come unexpectedly and in the most beautiful synchronistically ways. So as an example, uh, I've been doing some processing. This is like, this is like full disclosure here, just like borderline. Uh, yeah, just like full disclosure. I've been, I've been processing some emotional stress, borderline trauma, uh, from certain things, long time ago, you know, childhood stuff that I just wasn't ready to look at until like maybe two weeks ago and not like earth shattering stuff, but like still stuff that I needed to integrate into my whole being. And like, I didn't go and see like a talk therapist or like actively seek this out. It just like came up and I was able to same process I just shared with you. I was like, yeah, okay. Clearly there's something there. Give me the grace to be able to face it, help me apply my tools. You know, just like imp imploring like my whole self, like help me do what needs to be done to like really welcome this kind of squeezed out and ignored part of myself into my whole being. And so as an example, like that came up, not during a meditation, but like unfolded synchronistically over the time. And then as an example, uh, I was watching an episode of one of my favorite shows, happens to be Star Trek. I'm sure you all are shocked to hear that. Uh, I was watching an episode of Star Trek and the thematic material of that episode, which I had never seen before as a new episode, was directly a dramatiz dramatization of like what I was dealing with in processing this emotional integration. It was like it was like that, like that stuff that I was going through emotionally, psychologically, spiritually, metaphysically was made into a drama by a screenplay writers and then brought to life in this episode. And then I just happened to watch this episode. And I was like, okay, my subconscious 
on display. And I was able to learn from watching it reflected back to me. And I was like, wow, now that's cool. That's really cool. How that all just like worked together so synchronistically. And like, if I had seen that episode, even a week prior, I wouldn't have been ready to get the gift and like integrate it in the way that like seeing your subconscious acted out by Hollywood actors can like really give you that gift. Like it's wow. So like, as an example, that's like one way that it happens. So do the meditations come to me? Do the visions come to me during meditation? No, it usually unfolds just like a manifestation does. Synchron- synchronistically, synergistically over time, little pops of insight here and there. And I just, I prior, here, here's the key thing I need to say to you. Okay. I prioritize giving space for this type of exploration. Okay. So it's not while I'm doing a track where there's a lot of talking, it's uh, a lot of a lot of my stuff comes through when I'm when I'm doing um, my end of day routine, which uh, this is like a little bit of a rabbit trail, and I hesitate to do it because I feel like it could just like go too far. But I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say it because I feel inspired to say it. So part of my end of day routine is I lay on something called a, a shakti mat. It's a spike mat. It's a, a mat of spikes. Uh, it sounds like a torture device. It borderline is, but with incredible benefits. So it's like this mat, I lay on it with my back and it has these little spikes and it's like um, 2000 acu pressure points on your back. And so I lay on it and it hurts like heck at first. And then my whole body relaxes. I get this amazing endorphin of natural painkiller rush. And in that space, like laying surrendered to first the pain and then the bliss, in that space, I get so many downloads and visions and connections and processing and like so much comes through in that space. So what I'm, I'm, this is not an advertisement for a shock to me. I'm just saying like I have tools where I like carve out a time of, you know, 20, 30, sometimes I'll lay on that thing for an hour, depending on like how deep I go, where I'm like actively inviting my growth. And I, I see it as self-care. It's like prioritizing. The other thing I do is I practice hot yoga in, in that incredibly, you know, environment of, of the heat and the humidity and like moving and doing postures and like breathing and like, you know, all just everything that goes into a hot yoga experience. I find that I get downloads in that space. And I think it's because like everything else is out of my way. Um, not that I necessarily integrate, integrate all of them while I'm on the mat, but a lot of stuff comes through while I'm doing it. I'm just giving you a couple of examples about how I actively create space through self-care to receive and process these things. And then the second part of your question was, do you see your visions in first person? Uh, sometimes yes, sometimes no. Um, sometimes I feel like there's uh, beings showing me things. And then sometimes I feel like I'm seeing things, if that makes sense. Um, and when I say beings showing me, th- me things, I don't mean that in like a weird or creepy sense. I just mean that I feel like I have a lot of allies in the non-physical space um, that I uh, actively invite to like help me process some of these things. And so sometimes I feel like I'm like being taken into a room and like almost given a presentation, like, look at this and like, whatever. Like for instance, when I talked about like being in the planning room before the incarnation and like looking at the map from the top down, it's like a multidimensional map of like where I was incarnating, what space was being like. I feel like I was like, seeing from an external perspective that that was happening and my soul was there. And so that's like an example of like a third person vision. And then when I'm in meditations and I'm like seeing other things, a lot of times those will be first person. So it can, it can vary. And um, yeah, it, it can vary. I think that's, I think that's all I have to say about that. Uh, Quince has a question. He says, Literally at like three, I asked how, when my eyes are closed, do I take my subjective experiences and clothe my imagination to its realist physical form? I feel like you were answering that exact thing. So instant manifestation, almost instant. I mean, yeah, basically instant manifestation. Very cool. Yes. So, uh, like I said, I could talk about this stuff for weeks. Maybe, maybe, Maybe this is an invitation to develop this further, but... I am going to say quickly because we're wrapping up here. How this all ties in, and Neville, I've been reading a lot of Neville lately too, and some of it's coming from my channel. I feel like lately, this is, this is like a like a me thing more than a him thing. I think because it's like I have the eyes to see what was always there in a manner of speaking. But I feel like lately I've been finding like 
just his absolute treasure. And it's been there the whole time. And like I, some of it, I think I've seen before, but like, I just wasn't fully ready to accept the like multi-dimensional, like hyper-dimensional language of what he's saying. And now I'm like tuned into it. So I feel like I've just been finding like these most incredibly powerful broadcasts. And now I get the chance to like bring them to life using my voice and transmit them for the modern age through my YouTube channel. So some of those are, are coming. And um, there's one in particular that like is just boom. Wow. And uh, I was working on narrating it this morning. It'll be, I read it the first time through and then I re-listened to myself reading. And I was like, I could do better. So it's like my second time through it. But like in this, he's talking about how the story of life is this multidimensional story that I just got done telling you. Okay. And also while we're getting ready to accept that, we learn to use the law and the law is that imagining creates reality. And so one example of imagining creating real creating reality is using our imagination to develop our multidimensional sensory organs of perception, just like what I'm telling you. It's a manifestation just like anything else. And another way of using our, our imagining to create reality is to do things like in the world of Caesar, like create sources of income, you know, uh, manifest business ideas, manifest partners or relationships or houses or like whatever we need to be equipped to do what we need to do. We can create that using our imagination. And that's like, that's like the, the door that we enter into these ideas. Like how many, how many of you, like the first thing you heard about was the law of attraction. Like you entered through that door. And the next thing, you know, you're like talking about everything we just talked about in this live stream, which is like dimensionally larger ideas. So it's like, you can start there, but like, by all means, as you're developing your imagination, it's getting sharper and clearer through this meditation and other, and other ways also, you're going to, your, your imaginal pictures are going to get sharper and clearer than ever. And you're going to be able to manifest faster than ever because you're more in alignment than ever. And usually the reason why things don't manifest quickly is because you're not truly in alignment with them. You think you want them. You think you want to be a billionaire. You think you want, you know, this house or this car, like whatever, you know, this, this specific person, like you think you want them, but there's a part of your being that's not on board with it. And because your energy is conflicted, you end up ma manifesting a, a mix mash of not quite the right thing. That's an adolescent problem, not knowing what you want. As you grow into maturity and you start to get supremely aligned and you're tapped into your existential joy, it's not about what you want. It's about what you are. You don't manifest what you want. You manifest what you are. And so you become those things. You become the billionaire. You become the man that lives in that house. You become the man or the woman or the whatever you identify as who's in a relationship with that whatever, right? That significant other. You become the person who is that. And so it just naturally becomes that. And you're able, it's, it's not about like, it's not just about seeing it clearly. It's about aligning with it fully, all of your energy on board with it. And that's when things boom, 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 just really start to happen for you. Okay. So I just wanted to leave you with that little note of encouragement. So we have Mike with us. He says, I love this conversation is happening. Usually I keep all this in my head. Thanks. Yeah. Well, like I said, I, <laughs> I agreed to give it voice. And I think it's so important because it's in your head and then I say it and now you feel witnessed and you feel seen. And now that part of you is enlivened. That's why we do this. Awesome. All right, my friends. Uh, full stream today. Almost two hours. A little longer than I usually go. And I trust and accept that every minute of it was valuable. So once again, thank you for being here. Thank you for being a member of my YouTube channel. Thank you for investing energy. Uh, in in all forms, your attention, your money, your presence, your thoughts, your you know your your in, investment of energy into like assimilating this process, like just all of the ways that you show up and invest are important and they're valuable, valuable to you certainly. That's why you do them. They're valuable to me, and I acknowledge that and I appreciate you for it. So thank you. Do have more content coming for the mentorship as well as the Quantum Hero Lifestyle Series. And I'm beginning to plan a new season of Daily Neville. So safe to say, you'll be hearing a lot more from me going forward. 
And uh, I'm excited about that. And I hope you are too. But that's all for now. I look forward to connecting with you again soon and hopefully in new ways. I'm still working on on other ways of us connecting and interrelating and uh, building a community together. So look forward to that as well. And until next time, imagine wisely, my friends. And I'll talk to you all again soon.